Hello, welcome to the Outside Fence. We've got a big preview of Super Saturday at Flemington, the New Market Handicap and the Australian Cup. I'm your host, Tristan Heffernan, and joining me as always, my Melbourne racing expert, Stuart Balls-Brown. Balls is a bit of a favourite day of yours uh, from memory. Uh, New Market, Australian Cup, usually usually good races for you to be betting in. Uh, well, I thought that on Blue Diamond Day when we did our last preview, and uh, that turned into a disaster. So I'm uh, staying nice and silent now, saying nothing. <laughs> we can we can blame the track on Blue Diamond Day, can't we? You're sure we can't expect to turn up and just see the fence off like that. Yeah, I'm not one of those people who likes to blame the track for my uh, my poor punting. I'll uh, I'll just cough it on the chin myself, and I saw him badly on the day, and hopefully uh, can rebound this week. I absolutely like to blame the track, but. Uh... You know, I usually find my bets from the track, so hopefully we won't have as much to worry about with Flemington. But the two races we're going to look at, 1,200 metres down the straight and the 2,000 metre Australian Cup, they generally pretty good distances to avoid any real track bias. The, the 1,400s are ten, tend to be the ones at Flemington that um, that catch me at usually. Is that a fair call? Yeah, well, I suppose down the straight you can tend to get sort of a few lanes that are a bit more advantaged or obviously notoriously the inside can be, sort of not be the place to be. But I think sort of straight racing at Flemington in recent times, the track's been generally sort of pretty fair. I think the track as a whole um, has been pretty fair, so you can generally bet with confidence there. It does seem like everyone's worked out the straight by now, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It's like, well, they generally pack down the middle a bit. Um and it's, I think a lot of it has to do with where the speed is drawn in the race, more so than sort of how much there is or um, anything like that. If you tend to get the speed drawn towards the inside, it's generally an advantage for those horses drawn on the inside half of the track and um, obviously vice versa with the outside. So I think maps are very important uh, when it comes to straight racing and sort of exactly where most of the speed's going to be. Beautiful. Is there anything we have to worry about with the weather on the way, weather and, and rail position? You've usually got this all sorted for us. No, I don't think there's going to be too many issues there. It's not going to be the warmest day in the world in Melbourne on Saturday, but um, there's sort of no rain forecast in the lead-up or on race day, so it should be sort of that good three, good four track as per normal. I was really interested that the rail's out five metres. It's a bit of a weird rail placement at Flemington. You don't see it too often. Generally, they'll go to, say, six metres um, around that area, but um, as Flemington generally does these days, I'd expect it to play fair and... Um, yeah, I'd be very surprised if there's any kind of uh, any kind of bias there. Interesting. I do have a theory that uh, unusual rail positions can produce a, a lane close to the fence. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on that. Um, I'm a big lover of leaders' track, so I'm hoping like mad that one turns up and I can cross off half the field. But uh, we're going to look at two races here. First of all, we're going to jump straight into the new market handicap. I'll bring up the market balls now. A couple of big fields for these uh, these majors, which is it's uh, it's good to see. It's good for betting, and um, it's not real good for my cut and pay skills on the on the graphic there. Huge eighteen horse field for the new market, but we got a two dollar ten favourite in September run. Did you think he was going to uh, she was going to come up that short there, Bobs? Uh, I thought she might be a little bit longer, but it's she obviously ticks like plenty of boxes. So um, yeah, she's a deserved favourite, um, and t- to me, there looks like there's a bit of a tail to this field. So um, yeah, it, it's no shock she's a short price favourite. Um, Two dollars ten sort of seems short enough to me though. Yeah, she does seem very easy to find. Let's bring up your speed map here. Um, you've got them. Pretty well bunched up here. Is that a reflection on the, the tempo you're expecting? It is a bit. Even though there is a big field, there doesn't look to be huge speed on paper. And generally with straight races anyway, they tend to sort of sit up early and sprint home. So I wouldn't expect there to be sort of a super fast speed here. Um, serious suspect does like to roll along a bit, but um, given it sort of can get some kind of control sort of outside in the Indian Pacific, I wouldn't expect them to go silly in front there. Um Swats that is a sort of horse you'll roll across from an outside gate and sort of can sit third, fourth there was. We've got the favourite there, September run map, sort of a bit worse in midfield. Um, and I'd imagine Craig Williams would be looking for clear running sort of around that 500 metre mark. Is it fair to say that it's hard to, to spot advantages or disadvantages on the map here down the straight because 
the jockeys have got so many options on on where they want to get to. It's not like they're they're all rushing over to to find the fence and the the race plays out from there. Yeah, I think things like cover um, and whatever what horse you're following are obviously big things down the straight. Um, the back markers because there's no turns and they don't tend to to go along in a decent clip. The back markers generally stay in touch with the leaders a bit more. They tend to only be sort of. I suppose four or five lengths off the leader as opposed to sort of eight or ten so um yeah it's, it's generally it's more a tactical affair than you'd find around a bend um and there's a fair there's a few nuances when you're doing the form on straight races okay we've got two main lead-up races for this new market here we're going to go through first of all is the lightning stakes which is a thousand meters down the straight. So I know you love straight track form for straight track races. This was won by Nature Strip, and we see, uh, especially we see the favourite coming out of this September run there in the green and red. Who else should we keep an eye on here, Bowles? We've also got Swats that who is sort of second to the outside there, just inside Fabagino. Um, and then we've got Elite Street, who's in the purple colours, and Hal Vorson, who's in um, those red, white, and black colours inside September Run there. But they both finish sort of well back. But, yeah, September Run and Spots, that are definitely the two to watch out of this race. Um, the thing is, they've met. Uh, they met all three times throughout this or this is the third time they met they met a couple of times through the spring september runs beaten swats at home every time and the, the margin's pretty been pretty similar every time it's sort of that around that one to two length range um so from that you could say that september run does have the measure of swats at particularly down the straight at flemington as well um but you'll see swats at finish off uh finishes off okay um here, but the eye-catching run of the race was September run down the outside. It's run the fastest last 600, 400 and 200 were meeting. Um, very hard to miss um, flashing home there and it'll only be better over the 1200 metres on Saturday and um, as we saw, it was a short price favourite and uh, that, this run is a big reason why. Yes, this is one of the biggest eye-catching runs of, of the year so far, September run. Now she does this like you say, she's done this pretty consistently too, Swats That. Swats That is always going to be nearer the pace, but September Run does seem to to flash over the top. The others out of this race were, were nowhere to be seen. I guess it's hard to see them turning the tables on these two. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if Hal Vorson um, or Elite Street could turn the tables yeah, on Swats That or September Run. Elite Street's probably the one that's got the most improvement to come up to 1,200 and won the winner bottom in Perth. Um, and the trainer's been fairly bullish about its chances this week, so um, and he knows how to win a new market as well. So um, I wouldn't be shocked if Elite Street did improve, but, yeah, as far as turning the tables goes, I, that would surprise me. Was there any excuse for Elite Street in this run? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just took it on face value that... Um, like a thousand meters was too short for it. It'd be definitely better suited up to twelve hundred meters. It's obviously its first look at the straight as well. Um, but yeah, as I said, I'd be regardless of any excuse from last start, I'd be very surprised if it could turn the tables on uh, on either of those first two. Can we? Can you find a negative at all for September Run here? Like the straight track forms superb. It's a it's a great lead in to the race. <laughs> Is there any possible? Well. Can you give us a slow for it? Yeah, it's it's hard to on form to find a negative for it. I suppose one one angle you could take that could be a negative for it is uh, you, we've got a big field on Saturday. We've got sort of seventeen or eighteen runners. Uh, it is drawn a middle gate, and it will get sort of back midfield or even a bit worse. So at some stage of the race, it's probably going to need a bit of luck um, to get a run. Um, so I suppose that's uh, some query. It's going to ha- it's going to have some traffic problems and have to navigate its way into the clear. Where was it's sort of its main rival swats that I'm expecting it to sort of have pretty much clear running um, and getting a better running transit than it. So I suppose that's a little slow you could put on it. Like a, maybe it does have some kind of map issue, um, but outside of that, um, yeah, all things being equal, it's hard to really find a reason to pot uh, September run. All right, let's go look at the Oakley Plates. Uh, this is where uh, probably the the other main hopes are coming through. We've got Zatori, Celebrity Queen, Standout, Bold Star, Brooklyn Hustle, Prophet's Thumbs. There's a, a few horses coming through. Do you want to just um, maybe identify the main ones we want to keep an eye on here, Bobs? 
Yep, so celebrity queens in those pink and white uh, Bob Peters colours that we seem to be pointing out every show. Uh, Zoo Tories in the red and white just outside uh, celebrity queens, sort of in about sixth or seventh spot um, there at the moment. Uh, standout will be in orangey type colours out wide on the track. Um, a bold star is in uh, sort of dark blue um, <clears throat> dark blue colours, about fourth last at the moment with a white cap. And Brooklyn Hustles in red colours, about uh, six last now through the middle there, in those sort of prominent red colours. And then we've got Prophet Thumb as well, who's currently second last uh, in the light blue sleeves. Beautiful. Now, as we run this, I want to get your thoughts on this Oakley plate. We know the Lightning Stakes had the cream, Nature Strip, Bivouac. Um, this was a very bunch finish, a very hard race to sort out. Uh, do you think this measures up to a similar level as the Lightning, or is, are we looking at a rung below here? Yeah, I definitely think it's a rung below. They, for an Oakley plate, they haven't gone hard here. Um, and as you mentioned, it was very much a bunch finish, which you probably expect off a slow tempo. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to sort of really warm to any runners out of this race going into the new market. Brooklyn Hustle was possibly the unlucky runner in the race, as we saw. They're just sort of racing in restricted room at the top of the straight. But um, she flashes late. I think we've spoken about her plenty of times on the show. Uh, previously about how I think she's probably bet more better oh she's a better horse at a, say a thousand meters more so than 1200 and a record probably suggests that as well so I'd be happy to go around her on Saturday uh, celebrity Queen's probably the one out of this race that I'd uh, respect the most going into the new market um, it's obviously got a great record uh, after 1200 meters or suited as well and you've definitely got to respect those connections absolutely one of the other Horses with a, a great straight record coming out of this race is Zoo Tori. Um, looked fair at best there. Uh, is the the change of track enough for him to, to turn his form around to, to show up in the finish? It's definitely a big tick for him getting back to Flemington and getting back down the straight where he's uh, a winner three times. He did win uh, over this track and distance second up in the spring. I think it was either in the Gill Guy or the Bobby Lewis, one of those races. So... Um, he's obviously got good form down the straight. Um, I just think the three-year-olds with the lighter weights and they're a bit more explosive than him these days, um, I think they'll have the edge over Zutori, but I'll be very surprised if Zutori didn't finish sort of top five or six. Okay. Let's, um, let's pull the market back up here because, like you mentioned at the start, there's quite a tail on this race, but... There's a couple of horses here which which don't come through the replays we just showed. The most obvious one to me is Serious Suspect. Uh, one of your favourite riders on, Jamie Carr, uh, has very good straight form. Uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on how he measures up here in, in obviously, his toughest test so far. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's a decent step up in class for Serious Suspect, but as you mentioned, he does love the straight. Uh, he does get Jay Carr riding and... Um, the map looks pretty good for him. He should control the speed with, along with Indian Pacific, um, and there shouldn't be too many challenges in that regard. So um, I think he's, he's a definite place chance, serious suspect. I just don't know if he can hold out a September run or a SWATS that um, sort of the finish. But, yeah, he's the sort of horse who's got to get every chance, and um, he's probably not a bad place bet in the race. Okay, another horse who has won down the straight is a fair time ago, but that is Flit. Uh, Damien Oliver, book drawn 17, so she's going to be out of trouble there. Uh, what do you make of her chances? Yeah, she's a hard horse to uh, to judge these days. As she's sort of a bit inconsistent. Uh, first up, she sort of sat close to a slowish speed and was, was only fair at best in Sydney. Um, so she's been flipped down to Melbourne. Uh, she, did, she did win down the straight as a two-year-old. Um, but yeah, I just, I just don't have the confidence in Flip these days to think that yeah, she's a winning chance here. Okay, one more before we go into our tips. Uh, imaging uh, up the top of the weights there. Um, any any chance to, to this runner around $15 in the market? I'd be surprised if he could win. It was a good run in the all last start, but I'm not thinking that's a strong form race as we saw sort of into the futurity as well. So... Um, and the other big issue with the imaging is it's a bit of a non-winner. I didn't like the way late 
in that late in the all how it wanted to get its head up and didn't look like it really wanted to run past Streets of Avalon. So um, Imaging's the sort of horse I'd want to see win another race before I sort of get uh, excited to want to back it again. Okay, let's go to the tips. Um, yeah, I've sort of copped out a bit on here. I can't work out how September run doesn't win. Uh, it does seem very short at first glance when you think, oh, this has come up $2.10 in the new market, but it just ticks every single box for me, September run. Now, you did make a case for trouble in running as being something against her, but... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to take black figures if, if that's what we're worried about. You've got um, both fillies down as some interest. Could you explain your, your betting process maybe on, on this race? Yeah, I think they're the two clear uh, best winning chance in the race, and the market obviously reflects that as well. I'd probably want closer to maybe $2.50 September run, and it wouldn't shock me if you got that uh, on the day, but... Um, if not, if, if September Rummer firms right up, I'm assuming SWATSAT's going to drift, and then I don't think it'd be the worst place bet in the world. SWATSAT, it's going to receive every chance. I think it's got a good straight record. As you said, it's only sort of one or two lengths off uh, September run generally. Um, so I'd be surprised if SWATSAT uh, can't run a place, and it possibly will be a better price than uh, September run for the win. If you had to make the decision, September run to win or SWATSAT the place, what would you go? Uh, probably swats out the place, to be honest. Yeah, it's a it's an interesting approach because it's going to be pretty similar odds, I reckon. So, yeah, there you go. We haven't told you much that isn't immediately obvious, but um, sometimes I do know that uh, when you were tipping September run back in the the Coolmore in the Spring Balls, that she was the obvious run there, and she actually paid a reasonable price there in the end. So sometimes people can can steer away from the favourite, just trying to find a bit of value on. Yeah, I don't think this is the race to be doing so, and it seems like you're probably of the same uh, opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, as I said, it's probably only a price thing with September run. Uh, she'd be my, she's obviously my clear top pick in the race. Um, so we'll just see what happens on Saturday as far as her price goes, and uh, yeah, make a decision from there. Absolutely. Let's hop over to the Australian Cup. This is a bit more open. This race, fifty stars off his excellent run in the Blamey. <coughs> Looks uh, pretty likely to start the favourite ahead of the Peter Young Stakes winner, Paradis. And then we've got uh, Still Prince, the, the Melbourne Cup runner from last year there, under double figures. Uh, anything strike you uh, when you first saw this market, Bowles? Uh, not a massive amount. Um, as I said, yeah, well, as you said, it's a pretty open race. It's not the strongest Australian Cup I've ever seen in my life. It's a bit, I think, the All Star Mile this year is sort of taking taken plenty of gloss off this race, which is a bit of a concern because one of the great races of the turf, the Australian Cup. Um, we'll, we'll probably get to it later. There's probably one horse in the market here that I was a little bit surprised about their price, but as I said, we'll get to that later um, when we go through a few races. All right, I have to echo your thoughts there on the, the strength of this race. Um, to look at this, no disrespect to the to the runners here, but when we're talking genuine weight for age horses, there, there isn't many of them here in... Well, the title of the Australian Cup, it should be one of the major races on the program, and unfortunately, that's not the case at the moment. Let's pull up the speed map. Um, you've got them strung out nicely here. Apologies to anyone trying to read. The, <laughs> <laughs> I did much prefer the straight races when it comes to, to sticking a speed map on a graphic, but you've got Holmesman fighting the front here. Balls Parody getting a, a lovely run there from one. Um, is there much... Angel of Truth and, and non conformist is going to be back anyway, but uh, you've got them all slotting in pretty well. Yeah, I, I, I tend to think they'll sort of go along at least at a speed where they will get the chance to slot in. Holmes was drawn wide, so and along with Best of Days, so there'll be a bit of speed on early with them wanting to get across. Angel of Truth's an interesting runner. Um, it has raced in a forward position um, previously, and when it certainly when it gets up to this distance as well. It's, it's two runs this prep. It's been quite sluggish early. So that's probably a bit of a concern for it. But I think if it does jump out of the gates, I wouldn't be concerned. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a change of tactics and the horse was going forward. Um, so that's definitely something to keep an eye out on. Um, the other horse, San Huberto, um, staying at 2,000 metres, probably wants a strong tempo to show his best as well. So depending on how he jumps, 
Um, they might be quite aggressive on him, and even something like a mid-race move um, could be in order for a horse like San, San Huberto. Excellent. Let's go. We've got three replays we're going to go through here for the Australian Cup. We've got the Peter Young, the Blamey, and the time-honoured Mornington Cup prelude. Let's go, first of all, to the Peter Young. This presents us with the second favourite in the race, Paradis, who's there in the purple colours. Um, you want to help us out with a few other runners to watch here, Bowles? Yeah, we've got Holmesman in front in the Lloyd Williams colours. We've got Steel Prince out three deep. Uh, outside Paradis there. We've got Harlem in the red cap in about fifth spot. We've got Shared Ambition in those greeny colours outside it. We've got Chapada in the purple with the white stars. And then outside it, we've got Nonconformist in the yellow and black and Angel of Truth out the back in pink. Steel Prince, was he three deep the trip or has he just pulled out here? No, he was pretty much three deep the trip. But as uh, well, we haven't mentioned yet, but they did go quite a slow tempo in this race. I don't think he paid a huge penalty. And it was a day where the fence was off at Caulfield. So, yeah, I don't think it was the end of the world sort of sitting out three deep. Okay, let, before we run it then, let's talk about that tempo. Then Holmesman found the front and, and controlled things. Yeah, they didn't go hard at all here. Uh, Parody was drawn the inside gate and sort of popped off to sit outside it. Um, and you'll see by the bunch finish, quite a few of the back markers sort of got home well running good late sectionals, um, but it was very much an on-pace dominated race. To give some indication, I suppose, how slow they did go, um, it was obviously a fairly a feature day at Caulfield. There were plenty of decent races on an Angel of Truth um, in this 1,800-metre race. It's run the 10th fastest last 200 of the meeting um, in this race, so it sort of shows you how slow they have gone and how much of a sprint home it really was. Okay, let's run it. What, what do you make of Paradis? Um, if you ever told me Paradis was going to be $6 to win an Australian Cup, I would have just thrown my hands in the air and walked off. Um, what did you make of this win? Yeah, like she, she, found the, she found the right spot pretty much. They obviously went slow. She's a mare in form. Um, she probably had a bit of fitness on a few of these as well, given that she'd been racing. She ran through the Magic Millions Carnival as well. Um, I tend to agree, like if you said yeah, a few months ago, she'd be $6 in an Australian Cup after I took sort of about $12 in a matriarch when she got beat. Um, yeah, I would have been very surprised. Uh, but once again on Saturday, she's drawn gate one. She's going to get every possible chance. She's likely to box seat. Um, so she, yeah, as she's going to give herself every possible chance. Do I want to take $6? No, but if she won after the race, you'd think, geez. Like six dollars was probably a bit of a silly price considering she won the leader. Yeah, let's talk about the ones behind her. If you had to take one out of this race, that's going to turn the tables on Paradis. <clears throat> who would you be leaning to? There's probably not no clear one that I'd sort of really grab onto. Possibly shared ambition. Yeah, but a lot of them ran pretty similar races, so I think a lot of it's going to be run of the race stuff for these horses. Um, how they go on Saturday. It's not a race I'm sort of dying to back these horses um, on sat out of this race on Saturday. Um, so I'd say if one of these horses win, um, I'll probably be losing. Do you think um, Holmesman will run him along a bit more than he did here? He could possibly, given that he's a bit fitter, but 2,000 metres for Holmesman, like, I don't know if it's his ideal trip these days, and he tends to run his best races on the fresh side as well. So... Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure. I think it more the fact that a few of those on-speed horses are drawn a bit wide um, might put a bit of speed into the race. And it depends also whether, say, a horse like Miss Siska, who's drawn low, even Paradis, uh, who's drawn low as well, where they want to kick up a bit and make those wide-drawn horses work, then that obviously will put even more speed into the race. Okay, I'm, I'm not really feeling the love here for the Peter Young. Let's try our luck with the Blamey Stakes. As we just let that run through. Must be strong through the line still there was Paradis. Here's the... Uh, oh, hang on. What have we pulled up there? I don't know where we pulled that one from. Proper Bill. She's everywhere at the moment. Let's look at the Blamey. We've got... This was one by Star of the Seas. You talk about a, a muddling tempo in the Peter Young. This was the absolute complete opposite. Uh, Buffalo River running them along. We've got 50 stars coming through this race. Uh, anyone else we need to keep an eye on? Uh, 50 stars is about it, but we've also got best of days in the Godolphin Blue there 
uh, outside the leader who's in this race, and uh, that's it, I'm pretty sure. All right, let's run them along, uh, much like Buffalo River did. Uh, tell us what your thoughts on... No, 50 stars, stars is the one out the back in the green. In the green. The yep, and he uh, absolutely motors to the line. Did they go as fast in this as what it looked, Balls? Yeah, they go very fast. Uh, yeah, obviously there's been a lot talked about Jamie Carr's ride on uh, Buffalo River, but uh, yeah, a few kicked up inside it early, and that sort of got the horse to be keen. And uh, once Buffalo River gets keen, no one's going to stop the horse uh, from charging a bit. Okay, Fifty Stars has, has done this before. Um, this is <coughs> was only a week ago. This race. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on. Such a brutal tempo a week out from from going into the Australian Cup here. Do you think that's a, a positive or a negative? We generally do like the, the fast tempo races as a sort of a form lead, but um, on the seven-day backup, uh, any concerns for you here? It As a ruler, yes, it can be a concern, um, sort of you know, coming out of a fast race on the seven-day backup, but for 50 stars, I'm not as concerned. Now, back in the spring... Um, he ran the Cantala Stakes and actually went at a similar speed to this race. Uh, he ran fifth in that race and ran well. He actually backed up seven days later and ran second to Arcadia Queen of the McKinnon, um, this track and distance. And as we mentioned, he also won the Blamey uh, last year um, for uh, backing up in the Australian Cup and winning um, there. So he's got form on the seven-day backup. He's very much a pattern horse. Um, and as a punter, I think most punters like those pattern horses because um, you generally know what you're going to get um, run to run. So, yeah, uh, uh, to answer the question, if I'm concerned, coming out of this sort of very fast run race for 50 stars, no, I'm not. No, you've just talked me into this being an absolute perfect platform. You spoke about best of days there in behind. Um, what are your thoughts on him going out of the 2,000 metres? Yeah, I think he's better suited to say at a mile than 2,000. His last few 2,000 metre runs in lesser grade, they've, they've been okay, but sort of nothing special. And also, I think with 50, uh, with sorry, best of days, he sat a lot closer to this fast speed in this race. He's pretty much sat outside the leader uh, with no cover, um, chasing that fast speed. So there's probably some concern with him how he's going to back up. Um, into this race. I thought he's run pretty well considering in this race. As you see, he's pretty much finished with Buffalo River in the end. Um, so I think he's going pretty well, but just that 2,000 metres and also that little query over sort of sitting close to this fast speed um, backing up seven days later is my major concerns for uh, best of days in this race. Okay, I like the thinking there. The um, yeah, Obviously, 50 stars was back and running home over the top of it, so Less of a gut buster there. Let's uh, move on to our third replay now. And this is... What is going on with this bloody Probabil race? Mornington Cup Prelude is what we're looking for. There we go. Defibrillate. Um, yeah, this is a horse that's sort of come from left field a bit, isn't he? It is a little bit. Um, but he has been flying this prep. He won early on in his prep at massive odds um, at Caulfield, and then that was the start of his four wins in a row. So he's, he's, he's as far as that's concerned, he's probably the most informed horse um, in the race. This is obviously a step up uh, in grade um, to a Group One from this morning to Cup Prelude, but. As we mentioned, it's not the strongest Australian Cup I've ever seen. This horse is in great form. So, um, yeah, I think it's a smart move by uh, Patrick Payne uh, throwing him in the deep end here because this is very much a winnable race for Defibrillate. Okay. Is, uh, is that him there in the black with the, the orange sash? It is. He's just about to move up on the back of San Huberto, who's also in the Australian Cup. Um, mm -hmm. And those two settle down to fight the race there. Okay. How do you go about trying to, to line up um, how defibrillate has been performing compared to... Well, we say he's getting into the top grade of the Australian Cup, but it's a, it's a good year to try, isn't it? It definitely is. If you, if you wanted to look at, I suppose, I use punting form, but if you wanted to look at their sort of ratings um, for his previous few starts, he has been rating very similar to a lot of his competitors in this race. Uh, in the Australian Cup. So um, what he's been doing, I don't think, sort of too far off um, what we needed to win the Australian Cup. One little concern I suppose I've got with him, like I wasn't that thrilled with his win um, 
in this race here. He, he sort of had every possible chance in the end. He's tracked up nicely. He found the best part, part of the track. That Well, obviously, this was race one, but we later found out the fence was a no-go zone. Um, he found, yeah, and he's only just sort of got home. I don't know whether sort of Paddy Payne had this race in mind, the Australian Cup for this horse, and he's maybe eased off a tad or not. But so a little concern is that, yeah, his last run probably wasn't as impressive as his previous three. Um, but, yeah, he's going to be double figures on the weekend. And, yeah, he's, he's the sort of horse, if you're looking for something that hasn't been sort of is still on the up and um, hasn't been going around against those same old horses, uh, then Defibrillate's probably the horse for you. Okay, we'll just let that run through. I'm going to pull back the market now after we've seen those three replays because uh, you sort of alluded to it earlier and I think I'm, I can probably guess which horse you're going to talk about here. There's one horse on this list that we haven't mentioned through those replays who's uh, quite a big price and possibly over overlooked here by the market balls. Yeah, I must admit I was... He's not a horse I find a lot, particularly in recent times, but I was quite surprised to see Humidor, the price he was. Um, I thought his run in the ore was sort of good enough. Um, he's obviously not a 1,400-metre horse, even though he has won a Group 1 at 1,400, but it's not really his go. And I think Waller would have specifically sort of had this race in the back of his mind as well. Um, jumping 14 to 2000 doesn't concern me given uh, given the stable and if you look at his spring form humidor he's finishing very close to horses like arcadia queen and russian camelot um at sort of 1800 and 2000 meters now they'd definitely be starting favorite um in this race um and his only poor run last prep humidor was in the cox plate where he bled so you can definitely give him forgive him for that run um, yeah, I just thought he, he seemed very big odds to me. I think if he did run in the Peter Young, he'd be probably a bit shorter than he currently is. Um, so, yeah, he, he's definitely a horse that interests me at the price. That's a good point you make with Arcadia Queen. We do know she beat 50 stars in that McKinnon stake. So the, the form ties in perfectly with the favourite here. Um, yeah, I'm definitely with you a bit there on Humidor. He seems uh, well missed in the market. You compare him around the same price to, to Angel of Truth and you've got... Horses like Sheer Ambition, non-conformist, shorter than him in the market. Wait for age, he's, he's in beautifully compared to those horses. Yeah, he definitely is. And um, it, it's not like he was in poor form in the spring either. And mm. as I said, his first run back was perfectly fine. He, uh, he he got through the line pretty well. There's sort of no nothing wrong with his first up run from when you look at the horse for what he's done. Um, and yeah, sort of around that fifteen, sixteen dollar mark, he uh, he does seem a big price. Any other runners you want to make mention of before we move on to the tips, Bowls? Uh, not massively, to be honest. I think um, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm probably steering away from that Peter Young. I'm looking for a bit of uh, a bit of different form, I suppose. So yeah, um, most of those horses that do come out of the Peter Young um, don't interest me greatly. All right, let's pull up the tips then. Um... Usually by this time we can guess them, but uh, you made a really good case for 50 stars. Balls, you're happy to be with the favourite? Yeah, I think he ticks plenty of boxes in this race. As we mentioned, he's very much a pattern horse, and uh, he's sort of you can follow that pattern into this race, and it looks a very suitable race for him. The other thing I did mention is he can possibly settle a little bit closer as well uh, on Saturday. He's drawn a bit of a low gate, so I think they'll make use of that, and he can probably he'll be midfield at worst, I think. So, yeah, he's a great chance in the race. And then the other two that I'm definitely interested in, Humidor, um, maybe, probably should have him as a back, to be honest. And um, uh, Defibrillate is definitely a horse that uh, I could possibly have something on as well. Yeah, well, once you see I'm backing at balls, no wonder you'd want to get him in there as a back as well. I'm with you on 50 stars. Love the platform. Love the pattern. And in what's a... Wow. It's... I don't know if I would go as far to say it's the worst Australian Cup I've seen for a long time, but it's got to be one of the weaker ones. So um, I'm surprised, actually, he was as long as he was there, 50 stars. I think he might start sub $4. And then Humidor, I couldn't believe the price on Humidor, just just his form in the spring is he's a proper weight for age horse humidor and uh there's not many of them in this race so i'm happy to back both of them and um yeah I, easiest betting race i can i can look at if they don't win fair enough but uh those two jumped off the page at me 
It's a big program on Saturday balls. Is there? Uh, can I put you on the spot for anything else through the day? Uh, in the last race, I thought personal uh, ticked plenty of boxes uh, going up to the mile. Um, there's a lot, fair few horses coming out of that Caulfield three-year-old fillies race uh, in the race, so I don't think it was the greatest race I'd ever seen. Uh, personal's got that form around Zoo Dancer, who ran well in the Australian Guineas. So I think, um, and back to sort of set weights as well, I think it, it looks a good race for personal in the last. Back to Flemington as well. That uh, won't hurt her chances at all. Wonderful. We'll wrap it up there. Balls, thanks as always for your time. Um, yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, the the numbers have been pretty good lately, so uh, smash that like button and, and subscribe to, to let us know you, you're watching the show and if you want us to keep going. And uh, yeah, we might be back for the, the All-Star Mile. Balls, I know you want to talk about uh, Still a Star, the Tasmanian runner. And um, it does seem to be getting a bit stronger every year, the All-Star Mile, doesn't it? It does. Uh, I will say, at an early glance of this year, there's probably two, a couple of standouts. Um, but as you said, we'll probably discuss that next week. We will. All right. Thank you, Balls. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And uh, until next time, see you all later. Thanks, F.